Hey guys, I'm back. Sorry about the rather long hiatus. Uh, what I'm doing today is I'm going to make um, potassium chromate and dichromate uh, from chrome oxide. And so what we're looking at here, this cup, this is 25 grams of chromium oxide. Uh, CR2O3 is what it is. It's the cheapest form of chromium that I can find. Uh, so we got 25 grams of that. There's also 25 grams of potassium nitrate in here. And there's 25 more grams of potassium hydroxide in here. And what I'm doing now is I'm trying to stir it up to get as intimate and homogeneous of a mixture as I possibly can. Uh, you can do this in a coffee grinder if you want or something similar. However, I recommend if you're going to use anything else other than manual stirring like this, just use a pestle and mortar because the potassium hydroxide in here is just going to tear up your stainless blade. Uh, stainless steel is kind of a misnomer in a lab. It doesn't stay stainless for very long. Uh, so once you get everything mixed up to where you got a homogeneous mixture, what we want to do is we got a stainless, or uh, it's just a um, measuring cup that I've torn the handle off of and we're going to dump everything into here once we get it dumped in we're going to pack it all down and the reason we pack it together is just because it allows for better heat transfer you should be wearing gloves when you're doing this uh, potassium hydroxide in here will heat you up the chromium is not really an issue at this point because this is just chromium and it's plus three oxy state uh, so it's relatively harmless and so right now I'm taking and I'm packing all this down as tightly as I can get it and again that's just for the heat transfer and now you're gonna have to uh, <laughs> you're gonna have to bear with my complete ghetto setup here I'm doing this without having a real burner you can see what I'm talking about here I've got a ring stand set up with a propane torch under it ideally you'll want to do this on a gas burner but my propane burner uh, is dead and so I'm having to do it this way so let's set this up here and let's get the heat going so cooperate with me There we go. Okay, now that we got some heat going, we just want to blast this. And we're going to leave it on here for as high a heat as we possibly can get. And what we want to do is leave this on here for about 15 minutes. And what's going to happen, let me get over to this a little better. You can see there's our mix in there. What we want is for this to predominantly, uh, you'll still see some green left in there. I've never been able to get this to go to completion, uh, i.e. you will still have some chromium oxide left over. Uh, but what we're really looking for is for all the KNO3 and the KNOH throughout this to melt. Uh, when it does so, it will then uh, oxidize this further into the chromium plus 6. So it will be in the plus six oxidation state. And then what we're gonna be left with then is a uh, mixture of chromium oxide and potassium chromate that we need to extract from this with hot water. So right now, we just let this go. Uh, you can see it's starting to already boil right there. I'm gonna have to move the uh, burner around just to try to get as equal heat around it as possible so I'm going to have to put the camera down to do that uh, I'll come back and show you what it looks like then once that is all done yeah so you can see what it looks like all right so let's uh, get this heated up and then I shall return just so you guys can see here I did I threw a little lid on this because uh, as this boils it's going to start to sputter and splatter and uh, it's the last thing you want is a bunch of molten alkali to come flying out of there onto you. It will 
ruin your day very quickly. So, uh, yeah, that's the only change. We're still heating it. It's going to probably take me longer than 10 or 15 minutes because I have such a shit little ghetto burner improvised here. But I just want to show you guys what's going on here. Carefully lift up this lid. You can see everything's kind of boiling around in there. And if you notice, it's starting to turn kind of a lime green or a yellowish. That's what we're shooting for. So I'm going to put the lid back on. Now at this point, before I handle this again, I'm going to put gloves on because once we start to get that yellow, that means that we have effectively oxidized the chromium into the plus six state. And that is when it gets really toxic. So I'm not going to play around with that anymore. Um, so what's going on here really, I'll take this time to talk about the reaction a little bit. You know, we're obviously oxidizing chromium from a plus three state to plus six. Uh, with the reagents we're using with the potassium hydroxide and the potassium nitrate, uh, our side products here are going to be NO, which then combines with air, uh, atmospheric air, and it makes NO2. Uh, so you want to do this in a well-ventilated area. Our other side product here, because we have the hydroxide, is some water. Um, you can also do this with like potassium chlorate. Uh, perchlorate should even work, I think. However, then you're going to be uh, generating some chlorine gas as your uh, byproduct. And so I just find this route uh, a lot easier uh, to deal with. Uh, the amounts of nitrogen dioxide generated are really minimal, but you should still have a really well ventilated area, uh, which I'm in right now. It might not look like it. Um, so yeah, so basically now we just wait until we see a... a prevalent yellow color in there then what we want to do is let it cool down mix it up a, a good bit try to mix it up as best we can and we want to heat it for a little while longer just to make sure that we've reacted everything as far as we can and uh, so that's when I'll come back when we get to that step all right so <clears throat> you can see in there you see all the yellow that's starting to form on there that's what you're looking for that is your potassium chromate that is forming in situ and so what you want to do is once you start to see that yellow forming we want to heat this if you're on a burner like you should be and not doing this completely ghetto as I'm doing it you should heat it for about another 10 or 15 minutes um, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna continue heating this uh, until basically that yellow color becomes prevalent throughout All right, so this is what it looks like now. I'm letting it cool. I've had it heating for as long as I'm gonna let it heat. I mean, it's been like an hour and a half and I am just getting sick of it. You can see all the yellow up there on the side. That's all the chromate that's formed. And the reason that we're forming chromate here and not dichromate directly is because uh, dichromate has to have acidic conditions whereas chromate can thrive in basic conditions and of course we added potassium nitrate which is basic and hydroxide which is highly basic so we've got a basic mixture here now and you notice too that the green is more of like a camo pea soup green now as opposed to the dark you can see like what it started as it was like this dark dark green of the chrome oxide now it's this nasty looking green here and that's because of the you can see all the little sparklies in there now it's sparkling that's actually the potassium chromate that you're seeing so here's what it's like this is in solution now you can see the nice yellow color of the solution the green at the bottom is unreacted chrome oxide uh, so now I'm gonna take this and uh, set up for vacuum filtration now I know uh, from doing this in the past that the chrome oxide the the particulates of it are very fine and they're real hard to get out uh, even with a medium fretted filter because they just clog it so I'm gonna put it through a paper uh, Buchner funnel first and then I'll see what I have to do from there so let's go over and let's do that 
All right, so I got my Vigner funnel here. And, well, wait a minute. I guess I should get a magnet. Stick a magnet to that first, because I do have a stir bar in there. All right, here we go. You can see how yellow that is once it actually starts to go through. All right, guys. I am at the stopping point. You can see there. This fucking piece of shit will focus, right? I feel like poor man's chemist here. Bitching about my camera all the time, but whatever. Uh, so, I'm letting this cool right now. Oh my god, focus. Um, uh, it's kind of hard to see here. But there are crystals all through this. You can kind of see it there better. I don't know, let me try to back out. Well, there you can kind of see it there. So what we're doing now is we're letting this cool. And it is pretty imperative to let this cool down as much as possible. Um, reason for that being that when we go to acidify this, you are, uh, you know, you're neutralizing a base. And so it's going to be pretty exothermic. The first time I did this, I didn't wait for it to cool enough. And I ended up getting like... Um, almost kind of like a, a brick red looking dichromate and it's just simply because it, it got too hot and it started to decompose a little bit I'm pretty sure uh, what it actually turned into I'm not quite sure I mean it was still dichromate but it was just not as bright orange uh, dichromate as what we should have um, so we're gonna let this cool down um, I mean right now it's not all all that hot you know I can touch it like this don't worry, I'll put gloves back on before I start messing around with this stuff. Um, for all you safety Nazis out there, you're going to be pummeling me in the comments for this. Uh, so, uh, I guess, you know, while this is cooling, really the only thing I can say about it is my choice of acid for this. Uh, the reason that we're using HCl as opposed to, like, sulfuric acid. And basically it just boils down to solubility issues. Um... So, uh, the HCl, when we acidify this, any of uh, the KNO3 or KOH that possibly didn't react uh, and that made it through and is now in solution, it's going to turn that into potassium chloride. And potassium chloride is far more soluble even in cold water than dichromate or chromate is. So the goal here is to be able to precipitate out our product with leaving our undesired side product, which is the uh, chloride salt here, behind in solution. And so, like, if you guys have ever made, like, nitric acid using the uh, potassium nitrate um, sulfuric acid method, you know, it's basically the most common one. Uh, think about that. Think about how insoluble the... Uh, I guess it would be uh, bisulfate in this instance, but the solubility of bisulfate and sulfate is pretty damn close. So just think about that and all of it that's left behind in your reaction pot and how hard it is uh, to even heat that and get your nitric acid off through all of that salt that is collected there. Uh, and I, that's a good indication of how insoluble uh, the sulfate or bisulfate is. So you don't want that because what's going to happen if you were to use sulfuric acid, say, um, you're going to have that co-precipitating with your potassium dichromate, and then you're going to have to try to figure out some way to separate the two. So this, using the hydrochloric acid, is going to leave you uh, with a, by far a more pure dichromate than what you would, um, say, using sulfuric. And the only reason I'm mentioning only sulfuric and hydrochloric is because those are the two most common mineral acids that you're going to encounter. They're OTC. You can get either one at the hardware store. Uh, and as you know, I, I try to do all of my chemistry with as much OTC uh, chemicals and reagents that I can. Uh, simply because I can't afford anything more. So for all you people out there that are broke as hell like I am, you know, I'm trying to do this for you guys to show you how it can be done without having to spend a lot of money. Um, so with that, uh, I'm going to pause this and 
I'm going to come back once it's cool and we can start acidifying it. Figured I'd just give you guys this little update here. Um, you can sort of see there. Come on, man. Would you focus, please? This camera sucks so bad. I apologize for the quality here. Anyhow, I was trying to show you guys there. You can kind of see it better now if I zoom out. See all the crystals that are in there? So, what I did was I just got this on the stir plate. There's no heat on it right now. This is my broken plate that doesn't even heat up. So, there's no worry about that. But you can see all the potassium chromate that's in there. Uh, so, I'm just allowing this to cool. If we come up here, you can see that we're at like 53 and a half, 54 C. And so, I'm going to just let this cool like it is until uh, the temperature isn't dropping anymore. And then we're going to start to acidify this. So I just thought I'd show you so you can get a better look. So you can see there is actually product here. And, um, you know, I just threw the thermometer in. So you guys can see what's going on. It's already dropped down to like 52C. I do have the stirring on. Um, it's just helping it cool down a little bit faster. So, uh, yeah, so I'm done for now. Again, I'll come back when it's time to start acidifying this and turning our chromate into dichromate. Alright people, we're down to about 23 degrees Celsius. I've got a little fan that you can see right there blowing on it. It's helped cool it down. Uh, so now we're going to start to acidify this. Uh, uh, I'm not sure exactly at what temperature the potassium dichromate is going to decompose but I would imagine that you got to keep it well under 100 C I probably should have looked that up before I started doing this but I really do not give a shit just don't let it heat up too much so in this garage cylinder right here what I have I have about 30 milliliters of uh, muriatic acid that's hydrochloric acid at roughly 31 and a half percent and so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna start to pipette this in gradually and we should see a marked orange color come up and you see it's starting to turn color already and if any of you are familiar with chromic acid you will know that it is going to give us a nice red color here. It's an orange really, but it's going to be so deep that it looks red. So we've got our stirring on very strongly. And we want to just keep adding the acid until everything dissolves again. We also want the solution to be a uh, orange color, red orange. It might look kind of red, um, but we want to just keep adding it until that color persists and it, it does not change at all. Um, normally, using the measurements that I started with, this takes about 40 to 50 milliliters of muriatic acid. However, I'm not sure how much this is going to take this time uh, because of my ghetto um, heating mechanism that I had to use. I'm not sure. I mean, obviously all of it didn't react. All the chrome oxide didn't react. So I don't think it's going to take even this full 30 milliliters this time. All right, so I just wanted to show you guys what's going on here. I've got all but the last five mils of the acid added and what has happened actually it's so cold out here in my lab you can see everything that's precipitated here I've had to actually start manually stirring this uh, the magnetic stirring there's just so much precipitate in here that it's just not keeping up with it so I'm having to manually stir this here it goes I'm just gonna dump in this last five mils of acid here 
can see the reaction there. Nice red color of our chromic acid forming. I'll just stir that up. So, if you're working in very cold conditions, don't be too surprised if everything doesn't dissolve for you. You can see there on my stir bar all the crude potassium dichromate that's formed. And this is uh, barely warm to the touch. I took the thermometer out as it was just kind of getting in the way. As I said, it's rather superfluous at this point. So, now that we've got that in there, now you notice there's all this stuff all over the stir bar. So taking a pH reading now is not going to do me much good. Uh, you know, because it's going to be tainted with all of this stuff that's all over here, which is our product. So now what I'm going to do, I think we need just a few more mils of acid. So I'm still getting some bubbling going on when I add it. So that lets me know it's not fully neutralized yet. And we're actually doing more than just a neutralization here. We are trying to actually make this on the acidic side. So I'm going to add, there's 10 more mils. I'm sorry. Only five. I'm gonna try five more milliliters of acid here and see what that does. Pour it right down the stir bar. But I think that we're pretty, pretty close to good here. You see how we've got that nice red color of our chromic acid. It's persisting. It's not going away. And as I stir it up, it should turn more of an orange color, as you can see here. But on the top, you can see that there's like a reddish-orange color. That's what we want. That's the color of chromic acid, which is what we are making here, effectively. This is so cold, i got to turn this fan off. It's freezing my hands. All right, so... I think that should be good. I'll take a little bit of distilled water to rinse off my stir bar. I know acid to water, but we're not dealing with anhydrous acid here. This is just muriatic. I'm going to wash down the sides of the beaker a little bit with this. So we don't need to really worry too much about flash boiling. The acid to water thing is basically for anhydrous acids. Make sure we knock everything down in there. Okay. So, we have at this point made our dichromate. Again, I'm not bothering with pH reading here because it's, it's going to be tainted by all of our product. And so what we need to do now is just let this cool and let our product crash out. Uh, and then we're going to be filtering it off. And then uh, just a recrist from hot water, and it's a done deal. So uh, normally I would put this either in an ice bath or in my lab fridge. However, it's so cold out here right now. I am just going to let this sit here for a while and cool down. And uh, then we'll do a vacuum filtration. So here it is as I'm filtering it. You can see what it looks like here. You can see our product at the bottom. Chromic acid on top. Filtrate should be a dark, dark orange, red color. And so this is going very slowly because I've got to use a stupid little 12 volt vacuum. That's all I have right now. But it's going faster than gravity, so we're going to just let this go until it's uh, all done. Wash it a few times with the cold water, and then we'll be ready to recrystallize it. This is our crude product. Right now, this is its third washing with cold distilled water. You can see the water sitting above it there. So I'm just washing this to get rid of all the excess acid that may be trapped in it. And once we get this all washed, then we just need to recrystallize it from boiling water. So I will come back uh, when it's time for recrist. 
All right, so here's our crude product. After washing it a few times, cold water. Uh, now we just gotta get this out of here and recrystallize it. Got my beaker set up right there. Got a stir bar in it already. Got water heating in the microwave, so we're gonna heat that up. Dissolve this in the minimal amount of hot water. I mean, standard recrist, nothing special here. So I'll be back when that's done. Here's what the product looks like after recrystallization. I use the same frit that I use to filter the crude product. That's what you're seeing there. All this brown stuff here around the edge, that's the crude product. And this stuff in the middle here, that's what it looks like after being crystallized. Nice bright orange that you would expect from potassium dichromate. Now there's a lot of this that has made it back into the filtrate. So I'm going to work that up again off camera. But this video is already quite long, so I'm going to call it an end. I showed you guys how to do it. You don't need to see the rework. Um, what you're looking at here is is it's just been filtered after recrest, and I used a little bit of cold methanol to wash it and dry it. And that's what it looks like. Nice bright orange, sparkly potassium dichromate crystals. Till next time, y'all.